Today, we want to talk about how we can actually make performance data accessible. And by accessible, we mean how can we really enable all people in an organization to make use of all the great data, all that information uh, that all of us are collecting. And for us, the answer is to move to conversational user interfaces and go beyond dashboards. The idea is really we want to build a digital assistant that can help us as professionals really do some of the repetitive work that we have to take care of or take some of the work away that computers just can do quicker and more efficiently so that we can really focus on the tasks that really require left and the right side of our brain. But beyond that, also enabling other people in the organization to actually access the information that we create and provide every day. If many of you look at a typical monitoring dashboard, you guys are totally happy. But think of a line of business manager who looks like all of these weird graphs going up and down. They have no idea what it means. So they'll always come back to you, uh, either ask you to provide information or they just kind of shy away from all the great data sources that we have. And we heard about communication before, and also communication being a key principle here. Making our data and the information wisdom we have available is a key piece to that. Last year, for those who were here last year, uh, I showed the first kind of prototype that we built of a conversational interface. This is like Slack. We could start talking in natural language. So the idea was really move beyond typing in simple commands, but can you could have a conversational interface. Obviously, just putting Slack in front of an API doesn't really help you a lot. So we focused a lot of our work on actually building a backbone um, that really provides meaningful answers. Because just showing you data and showing you data in a different way doesn't really help a lot. So what we really need, and luckily we have, this we have these possibilities available these days, we need some AI-powered systems that help us to take certain tasks away from us that AI can do as well as, as good as we can do. And this is an example here of a real-world example. So what you can see here is the summary of a very large-scale production problem. This was a production Mesos cluster running a couple of thousand machines. On the top, you see it's like 800 billion dependencies. So machines running containers, containers running services, services talking to other services, providing functionalities to end users. And 820 billion is quite a lot. On the lower right side, you see what the system actually looked like. And for some funny reasons, it really looks like a mushroom cloud. Reason is there's a couple of machines running lots of containers with lots of services talking to many other services, eventually being used by a couple of applications. So if you look at that problem, it will usually create like millions of alerts in your system because the system's trying to recover itself, creating new instances, they crash again, and so forth. You will have to figure out what the actual problem is. It will take you quite a while. What you see on the left-hand side, the actual issue that was going on, there was a TCP retransmitter rate due to a flaky network that was causing some containers to time out being killed, we started, killed, we started, killed, we started. It's not that you couldn't figure it out yourself, but today we are able to build machines and put as much operational intelligence for analysis into these machines that they can help us with this problem. The difference is, do we need to look at the data for hours to figure it out while my system keeps on doing uh, weird stuff, or do we get this information right away? So it's really about this combination of having interfaces plus also having the technology backbone to make these things work. But it's not about technology alone. It's really not everybody in your organization is a performance or monitoring geek. And we really mean geek in the most positive way possible. But when we create all this data, keep in mind there are other people in your organization, especially as you become more digital and you like implement new things, there are people interested in your data suddenly that don't have ever maybe used a monitoring tool, that even have used a development tool, have no background, but they still want to get access to this information. And a lot of people, whenever we start talking about AI, it's about, okay, you're trying to replace humans, and that's not what this is about. It's not about replacing humans. This is a study that was done by Forrester, and they were asking executives, so which are the areas where you guys fail to hire enough people? What are you guys worried about? And it just was at a very big company here in New York yesterday, and they told me exactly the same things. I have to scale up my team with all that stuff, and I have no idea where I can find the people. What you can see here, it's IT development infrastructure, so operations and development, business analytics plus customer service. 
people. So the good thing for you guys in this room is, good news is, there's lots of opportunities out there and you can pick and choose. The bad thing for the industry is, there will never be enough of you because we can't scale up as quickly as we could. Just another hint here, uh, we see from a lot of companies that they want to increase the monitoring footprint because today, just to give you some numbers, about like 5% of all applications running are really deeply monitored to the extent that you can easily diagnose them. Some of the others are just basic CPU memory monitoring. And companies want to move to 25%. So the thing here is, you can do all of this. We can do all of this because there's simply not enough of us. But we said, yeah, but everybody knows how to ask a question. Everybody can speak up what they actually want to do and just ask a very simple question. The problem with simple questions, however, is that they are very often very hard to answer. Like, think of our nice uh, business guy here. He just wants to know, okay, how's my business doing? How's my new mobile app doing? Or how's the new onboarding workflow working? It's a very simple question, right? But think of what it means to answer that question. First of all, you have to figure out which data sources do I need? How can I access them? Where do I get a password and a user login for these data sources? And somehow it got fancy that for every new tool that you get out there, you're defining a new query language just because you can. So how can I write a proper query? And even if I have figured out all of this, which assumptions do I want to test? And how can I actually get actionable insights out of these assumptions? And that's why we built what we call a digital assistant that can talk to multiple stakeholders, is able to answer complex queries, and really proactively helps you. And we kind of want to show it live here on stage and get your feedback on it. First situation is Dave and I are going to stand up in the morning. And we're late. I really was late for the rehearsal today. David usually never is. Just pretend both of us are late. We're in the stand up. We know how, what we have to figure on right now. Problem is we're late. So we could go back to our desks, 10 minutes, look at everything that happened around. yesterday. Yeah. But it, it we have another idea. Yeah. So let me introduce you to Davis, who could potentially expedite this process. Echo, launch Davis. How can I be of service? What happened yesterday? It looks like 12 problems occurred yesterday between 12 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. After giving it some thought, here are my top three problems. First off, there was a global outage for synthetic-based <coughs> web checks, which affected weather easy travel, but it closed yesterday around 8.50 p.m. Next, there was a high number of connectivity failures, which affected CouchDB, but was resolved yesterday around 8.55 p.m. Finally, there was an overwhelmed CPU, which affected VMware hypervisor, but it closed yesterday around 7.30 p.m. Would you be interested in hearing more about the first, second, or third problem? Wow, Eloise, that third problem seems like we should probably look into that first. The third one. This problem started yesterday around 6.40 p.m. when a degradation in user action response time started impacting VMware Easy Travel. Eventually, VMware Hypervisor experienced a degradation in user action response time yesterday around 6.45 p.m. This problem appears to be resolved now. However, I would recommend investigating the root cause of this problem to see if there's a way to avoid this in the future. Would you like me to open this for you? Absolutely. Okay, here you go. So, and what you can see here, it would point me right to the actual entity that was involved in this. And let me work on this. So usually you can imagine this like being a big screen in your office after talking to it. But let's spend just a second here what happened in the background here. So it pointed me to the CPU issue. But what it did in the background, it really analyzed everything that was going on up here and was watching how the system failed, how users couldn't use the application anymore and how eventually the CPU saturation was the cause here. So instead of like going through all those problems, in the beginning it was 12, it was taking me right to the machines that were not doing fine, and we could discuss this now in a stand-up, but we're not always in a stand-up, so sometimes we just want to get it to information um, in other ways, so it's not always about talking, but yeah, I know that Dave, yeah, he wants just to check in. Other people check Facebook, he's checking I'm on the status. run, I'm leaving for the office, um, maybe on my way home, driving in my car, but I need to check out something really quick. 
and I want access to that on-demand information. So I have Slack on my phone here, and uh, this is our Scrum channel. And I'm going to ask Davis if he can help me out by asking what's up. Um, David, you are where we are in front of the camera here. You are yeah. technically right now texting in your car, which is illegal. And it's not fair. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, okay. So I think I could use Surrey, right? Hey, Davis, what happened yesterday? Okay, uh, anyways, David. Just take over, please. Yeah. Taking it from here. Yeah, and beyond that, I mean, these were pretty technically used cases. So we used the stand-up one, we used the other interface, but there are other scenarios as well. So we said we want to open it up to other audiences, and we have our team meeting on Thursday. Actually, we don't have our team meeting because we're here, we're but here, right. technically we would have our team meeting. But I know the marketing guys, they're just going to ask about usage data. And as we can't be there. Let's see if Davis can be. Echo, launch Davis. How can I help you? Can you tell me about user activity levels? Hmm, it looks like there's currently about 30 user actions hitting VMware Easy Travel, which is a decrease of about 210 from this time yesterday. The majority of your users accessed your site yesterday around 8 p.m., while the least active time was around 8 a.m. What else can I do for you? Nothing, that's all. So, another Talk way of to you later. <laughs> she even starts to interrupt me right now. I think. Too much personality. Too much it? personality, yeah, we have to work on this. <laughs> so as you can see, the interactions really depend on your target audience, your context, and your situation. So what we try to build here is obviously offering a chat ops interface. There's also proactive dashboards because obviously it also makes sense for Davis to speak up when there's a problem and don't wait for us asking for it. Right. Plus the voice piece. And now you might wonder, okay, this is really nice, but how can this help me? Actually, we would love you guys testing it out. So if you go to dinotrace.com slash meet Davis, you can register, you can actually get access to Davis, you can download it. And as the conversational interface by itself is not that much fun as you've seen, and you also need the backend, we also give you free access to the Dynatrace AI platform, you can start using it. And it's then all on GitHub. It's a project that we invite you to. And you can even extend Davis with your own conversation because, because all the conversational code is all open source. And we just invite you to go there, sign up, and just let us know what you think. I think we ran a bit over time here. I think we are yeah. good to go now. It's OK. OK. <laughs> That's Thank it. You. Thank you, guys. <laughs>